Hi everyone and welcome to Conversations for Peace. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach. Yesterday during our conversation with Lisa Warner, we spoke about how to utilize your mind's eye in order to help you to create peace. We talked about energy, essentially how energy is constantly seeking out other energy just like itself. And as such, it is always expanding as long as it's getting your focused attention. And so I was thinking today about the circumstances I know that have occurred in my life where I have lost my connection to peace and I knew that I needed to bring myself back to it. Now, there have been a number of those circumstances as there have in everyone's life where we lose sight of peace. But first I want to emphasize that peace is always present even though we have lost sight of it, even though we can't connect with it energetically, it is always there. In fact, it's kind of always there in our peripheral vision. It never gets too far away. We are always seeking it out, even when we're not conscious of it. But I know what happens is that we get distracted, right? So there's always something going on, a conversation, um, uh, something that you're watching or reading or listening to that sort of waylays you and you lose track of where you are energetically. So I was thinking today about some of the things that I know I do for myself during those times where it seems like peace is so far away. I use a lot of imagery. Imagery for me um, is like an immediate connection because I have something that I am familiar with to work towards, to work towards being able to align with it. And throughout the years, I've had many different images that I've used, depending on how severe my disconnect to peace is. But there are stepping stones, and that's kind of what I want to talk with you about tonight. The truth of the matter is, is that trying to get from where you are to where you want to be in peace sometimes is insurmountable in your belief at that moment. And what happens when you realize that you can't get there and you get more and more frustrated, you may have a tendency to beat yourself up or to believe that there's something wrong with you or that surely you must have done something that you don't deserve peace, in which case you may start to punish yourself or look to others to punish you in ways that will relieve this anxiety, even though it sounds, you know, it sounds like that could never happen, but it's actually to relieve the anxiety of not being peaceful. And yet to be punished in any way could never create peace. It's not possible. So what I want to talk about is the importance of just being willing to take one step, just one step, one step towards peace. And so when I think about that, suddenly it becomes something that I can ask myself, well, what if? What if I can take just one tiny little step? What does it require of me to do that? Nine times out of ten, it's going to call for forgiveness of some sort. Usually, the focus goes to someone who has wronged you or someone else who has created this disruption in your peace. And I think that that is very often our response to our own agitation. We look to 
the source of it being on the outside of us. And so even my mere mention of forgiveness, it may have brought up some agitation. It may have, you know, brought up some anger. If that has happened, it's because just under the surface of your emotions is dense energy that is really waiting for you to give it some light so that you can lighten up. Whenever we have that really strong emotional reaction to something, it's like you go from zero to a hundred in a nanosecond. That's the reason for it. It's energy that's been sort of lurking right under the surface of your consciousness. And it's been poking holes in it. Kind of like, pay attention to me, you know, like a small child that wants your attention. It just keeps poking at you and poking at you and poking at you until you finally give it the attention that it both wants and deserves. And so this energy is exactly the same. It will just keep poking at you. And what happens is when we have these eruptions, we have two choices. We can either react to the reaction, to that eruption, and you know immediately start to purge that energy. And in most cases, we project it out onto the most local target, right? And even though that person or circumstance was not involved, they seem to get the brunt of all of that pent up energy. But we have a choice. And the choice is to either continue to react without doing anything about that energy that's just asking for some light so that you are light, lightening up or we can start to respond, which is completely different than reacting. So here's the difference. Reaction is reactionary, right? Something happens, it's a stimulus of some sort, and you just, you just react without much thought. A response, however, typically requires that you pause that you step back a little bit, that you take in the information rather than immediately reacting to it, you take it in and you take a look at it. And all of this is happening in like these nanoseconds. And you may not be totally conscious of it, but there is a part of you that has chosen in that moment to respond rather than to react. It may seem like a small thing, but it's huge. And in reality, it's a huge step forward towards peace. Because when you take that pause and you are choosing to give yourself a moment, maybe take a nice deep breath in, just relax for a moment. But when you choose to pause, you're actually acknowledging, number one, that you have the ability to do this, that you can utilize the power that is innate within you. You can call upon all the systems that have been developed and created within you. And you can actually step into your power as a source of creation, a creative being, just by taking that pause. What you're also doing is you are strengthening your connection to your higher self. Your reactive self is the childlike sort of ego aspect of you. Your responsive self is coming from a place of a higher connection to 
your own consciousness and the intelligence that is constantly flowing through you. So your response is essential when it comes to having an overload of stimulus which has knocked you off of your peace game. So responding is where you're choosing rather than to point fingers and blame and shame and guilt and see that there is a reason for you to be disconnected from your peace based on what someone else has done. Now you can ask yourself the question, how can I utilize this to help me to get back to peace? Now you're really cooking. Now you're really totally in control of your ability to create. And I, I talk about this as being the difference between being reactive to life and proactive in creating life. So that one little thing, that one moment where you choose to just pause and respond rather than react is power. So that's what I'm leaving with you today. In the hopes, of course, that you will think about that and prepare yourself so that you can remember that that's an option for you. Because when we are reactive, we are not remembering that that's an option and that it will take you one step closer to peace. There's a huge message in that. You're telling yourself that you're worth more. You're deserving of more. It's actually an act of self-love. And peace is all about self-love. Choosing what is natural to you rather than what is unnatural. So today I'm going to share with you my peace pledge as I have every single day. And I want to encourage you to go to heartshiftcoach.com to get your seven ways to cultivate peace, if you haven't done so already, and also to access the Peace Pledge. And I hope that you'll take it with me every single day as we continue to take steps towards peace every single day in every way possible. So here's my pledge to you. I pledge to extend peace into my circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, by taking personal responsibility for who I am, my beliefs, my thoughts, and of course, for taking compassionate action. I take this peace pledge very seriously and I pass it on through my peaceful heart to yours. This is my gift to you today. And so until next time, know that I'm also taking your peace in. And of course, peace out to each and every one. Until tomorrow, bye-bye. Have a peaceful day.